Today on Loyola News, midterms are coming to an end and we have a scoop on where your classmates are spending their spring break. Will Loyola become a smoke-free campus? And meet a Loyola student who is already making thousands of dollars a year. You don't want to miss this. From the Convergence Studio in the School of Communication, this is Loyola News Chicago. outside, but that won't stop Loyola from celebrating spring break. Hello and welcome to Loyola News Chicago. I'm Julie Williams. And I'm Lane Davis. Here's the news. It isn't spring yet, but the Loyola calendar is saying it's time for spring break. Isra El Halawani found out what students are planning to do in the next week. With midterms covering everyone's schedules, there's only one thing that everyone's been looking forward to all week, and that's spring break. Whether you're going on vacation or taking some time to relax, here's what Layla students are planning to do. I'm going home to Milwaukee and then I'm going to go to Phoenix, Arizona where I'm going to see the Grand Canyon. I'm just planning to stay here, um, look over like some internships online, I don't know, just kind of like relax. I have to do a couple things for school. For spring break, I will be visiting some family friends in Connecticut. Um, their daughter is about to join the Peace Corps, so I'm going to go see her before she leaves. I am actually going to Montana um, on Saturday. My boyfriend goes to school at Montana State, and I'm visiting him for the entire week. I'm going to Washington, D.C. because I studied abroad last year in Spain, and my best friend who I made there goes to school in Washington, D.C., so this is actually the first time I'm going to get to see her since we were in Europe together, so I'm really excited. Excited. I'm flying to Tennessee to stay with my friend's aunt who lives on a farm. Um, she has goats, so we're going to play around with the goats and stuff. Spring break seems like the perfect time to spend with family and friends. Israel Hanawani, Loyola New Chicago. Traditionally, Loyola has always had the earliest spring break out of all the universities in the Chicagoland area. Classes will resume on March 9th. Whether your spring break plans include going on a trip or binging on Netflix, the dates may mean enjoying your time off with friends from uh, without friends from other schools. Loyalist spring break begins March 2nd, just one week earlier than the most popular spring break week in the country. That covetous spot goes to the students at Illinois State University, whose spring break starts on the 9th, while students at Northwest Northwestern and DePaul have to wait until March 23rd for their break. In other parts of the country, some colleges have spring break as early as February 23rd and as others as late as April 20th. On the plus side, having spring break during a less popular time means cheaper flights and hotels. It's midterms week and as every Loyalist student knows, that means one thing, added stress. All college students experience stress as many balance school, work, and extracurricular activities. However, with spring break quickly approaching, the workloads pile up and the stress increases. Test papers and a variety of assignments are only part of the rise in anxiety. Loyola students feel the weight of midterms and of finding different ways to de-stress. I work out or like kind of make, keep myself busy. I usually end up like kind of like eating a lot more and probably like not eating the healthiest either just because like I'm rushed and things like that. Playing video games if I have the time. If not, then it's just listening to my favorite music. Even though midterms are stressful, spring break makes it all worth it. Loyola student government wants to know how students feel about smoking on campus. Loyola's Safety and Wellness Committee held a forum on Monday to discuss on-campus smoking. The forum included a panel of experts all affected by smoking on campus. Students were able to write down questions for the panel to answer. Panelists from the Wellness Center voiced their concerns about secondhand smoke and reminded attendees about the addiction counseling they provide. A student smoker gave his perspective on the inconvenience of a smoking ban. And students also heard about how cigarettes can pollute campus. Members of student government hope the forum sparks action on campus. It's a long process. The, uh, it's really easy to say, why can't we just enforce a smoking policy and get something together right now? But if you want to do it the right way, and in my, in my opinion, the right way, you have to get every voice involved. The committee says it wants to be transparent and open to students on this issue. But what are students saying? Lauren Smith found that not everyone agrees with the idea of a smoking ban. 
With the possibility of a smoking ban lingering over Loyola, students have mixed feelings whether prohibiting smoking on campus is even necessary. Um, I guess it would, if it was a complete ban and it was enforced, it mean I would have a rough time if I wanted to step out and have a cigarette. I think on the instances it does happen, for people who really don't engage in smoking, even just inhaling like the puff of someone else's smoke just really isn't desirable. I feel like giving a restriction like this, obviously it's like similar to the water bottles ban like they had where you can't have water bottles on campus, but I feel that what's next if they keep restricting us with things like smoking, I feel like this is not that big of an issue. As of now, Loyola's student government is working towards adding more student opinion to push the smoking ban. Currently, U of I, ISU, and UIC are all smoke-free campuses. Reporting for Loyola News Chicago, I'm Lauren Smith. We have learned from student government officers that the smoking ban question will not be on the ballot this spring. The earliest it would be on the ballot will be next year. Good news for Illinois. Illinois graduates ranked among only 12 states where more than 70% of students at four-year public colleges graduated during the Great Recession. The report was compiled by the National Student Clearinghouse Research Center. Illinois was also among 11 states in which at least one in five women who started at two-year public institutions completed a degree at a four-year institution. She's been featured in the New York Times and Huffington Post for what started out as a prank. Alex Whitler tells us how one Loyola student is working to make an international difference right here on campus. Emily Templewood isn't writing her latest term paper. She's working for women's rights and getting paid to do it. The junior molecular bio major got a six-month $9,400 grant to manage a project about female scientists for Wikipedia. Templewood got interested in the online encyclopedia when she was about 10 years old. I remember making a page um, about my little sister and it basically consisted of Sophie Templewood is a butthead. From there she actively researched and edited online to make up for it. Now at age 20 Templewood edits and writes. She has written more than 200 articles for Wikipedia to draw more attention to women in science. And it's the social justice. I'm actually, people read Wikipedia, right? Like you guys read it, I read it, I, I mean everybody does. And it's a way to really make a difference. Um, you know, if it's not on Wikipedia it doesn't exist for a lot of people and you know it's literally writing people back into history. Students in the Women in Science and Math organization help by attending Templewood's research events. Um, so it turned out that I needed other people to get on board. Other people like Ashley Iannatone. Iannatone is also a junior biology major and she regularly helps Templewood's cause and has seen firsthand her dedication to it. She does everything. Anything that you could think of that was science related she does it and she excels at it. Her work for the grant has taken her all over the globe. She attends conferences around the world to help spread the word about the cause. When she is on campus, people from all over Chicago come to her events, like Chris Schilling. He also has a grant through the Wikimedia Foundation and the two often work together. So, so Emily and I, we do support each other's events that we put on. Emily hosts events like this one twice a month, and you can attend the next one next semester. Alex Whitler, Loyola News, Chicago. Temple Wood hopes to continue her work at Wikipedia for as long as she can. She's applying to get the same grant for another six months and plans to incorporate her work with other organizations to create more Wikipedia articles. Coming up on Loyola News, exciting news for Loyola's men's basketball team. And Loyola students are getting a lesson in self-defense. More on that when we come back. Rosita, mm -hmm. did you know there's a right way to sneeze? <laughs> Let's show them in my yeah. When you feel like your nose needs to clear it at you, this is how you act, this is what you do. Lift your arm up high, bend it toward your face. Sneeze right there on the bloody place. A chill, a chill, you I can do it with ease. A chill, a chill. To learn more about preventing flu, visit flu.gov. Life is full of distractions. Ah, Some are minor. Rash, look, look who it is. Others are more severe.
the CTA's Red Line is making some changes, and when we get back from spring break, traveling between the Lakeshore and Water Tower campuses will take even longer than usual. Students are no stranger to the Chicago Red Line stop near the Water Tower campus. Construction will happen at the Wilson stop and will mainly affect southbound trains during the morning rush hour. CTA spokesman Brian Steele told the Red Eye the trip will take about six extra minutes. Students will have to get used to leaving a little extra time for their commutes. The project is expected to take a year to complete. Chicagoans will be returning to the polls in April. The city faces a runoff between current Mayor Rahm Emanuel and candidate Jesus Chuy Garcia. Voters who went to the polls Tuesday faced freezing temperatures. That may be one reason why voter turnout was only 33 percent, which is down from 42 percent from the last municipal election. A record number of people took advantage of early voting, but some people say they still like voting on Election Day. This year's election ended in the most ward runoff since 1947. At Loyola's Lakeshore campus, Alderman Joe Moore kept his seat in Chicago's 49th Ward. Water Tower Park is being renamed for late Mayor Jane Byrne. The naming ceremony will take place this spring for the plaza surrounding the Water Tower. This comes after a vote passed by the City Council to honor the late mayor. Byrne is the only female to have been the mayor of Chicago. She lives near the park close to Loyola's Water Tower campus. Byrne was able to see the approval of the renaming but passed away last November. There is no official date set for the ceremony. Wins and tournaments and injuries, oh my. Maria Schotkowski is here with sports. Thanks, Julie. The Loyola Ramblers men's basketball team beat Drake Wednesday night in Des Moines, Iowa. This wasn't just another win for the Ramblers. They clinched a playoff spot in next week's Arch Madness. They captured the sixth seed, which means they don't have to participate in a playing game. The Ramblers played in overtime, winning 80-75 over Drake. Both Earl Peterson and Christian Thomas led the Ramblers with 20 points each. With this direct path to the quarterfinals, the Ramblers play Missouri State this Saturday in Gentile Arena before next week's trip to St. Louis for Arch Madness. Ramblers still on top. Loyola men's volleyball team continues to dominate with their undefeated record. This past Saturday, the Ramblers beat Penn State three sets to one in Gentile Arena. Freshman Ben Playstead led the Ramblers with 14 kills, while junior Thomas Jeske followed with 13 kills and senior Cody Caldwell had 12. The Ramblers won the first two sets, but fell to Penn State in the third. However, Loyal had several consecutive kills to win the fourth set and ultimately the match. The reigning national champions play Quincy University on Thursday in Gentile Arena. Chicago sports teams took a hit this past week. Both the Bulls and the Blackhawks lost notable players due to injuries. Much to the fans' dis dismay, Derrick Rose left Wednesday's game against the Charlotte Hornets after he tore his meniscus. Again. He suffered the same injury in 2013 and was out for the season. Although it is not confirmed that he will be out for the rest of this season, Bulls fans are not optimistic. In fact, some say that this may even be the end to his career, and they are not happy. Chicago fans are also not happy over the loss of Patrick Kane, a center for the Blackhawks. He left Tuesday's game against the Florida Panthers with an upper body injury. According to team officials, he will be out for about 12 weeks. A significant player to the team, his absence will be missed, but hopefully the Hawks will adjust on the ice. The sports editor of the Loyal Phoenix, who is also our own very sports director, celebrated a personal win this past weekend. Joaquin Carrig won a first place award at the 32nd Annual Illinois College Press Association Awards on February 21st. Six new awards will be hung up in the Phoenix's newsroom, adding to the paper's already large collection of achievements. Carrick's hard work earned him a first place in the sports game story category for non-daily papers. Only four of the six awards won went to current staff employees. Carrick has been an editor since fall 2014. However, the award was for an article written last spring. Among the newspaper's five sections, the sports sections received two awards. Carrick was appreciative of his first Illinois College Press Association win, but it wasn't exactly how he thought the day would turn out. It was pretty unexpected, honestly. Um, it was awesome. I mean, I was pretty elated, but um, it wasn't the award that I was expecting to win, honestly. There was a column that I had written that I was pretty proud of that I thought I might have had a good chance at winning an award, and so that's why it was a little bit more surprising. 
you can grab a copy of the Phoenix on both campuses every Wednesday. Well, I can, I'm sure I speak for all of us when I say that we're very proud of our sports director. Definitely. Thanks, Maria. Loyola students recently learned some valuable lessons about how to protect themselves. The Loyola Karate Club hosted a self-defense seminar teaching basic safety techniques. Participants heard the importance of avoiding dangerous situations. Students were also taught basic karate moves and practiced the moves on each other to learn how to get out of a dangerous encounter. The Karate Club president, our own Katrina Lim, hopes participants left the event with better knowledge of how to protect themselves. We just hope that everyone enjoys this event and that they'll walk away with some useful skills that they could use or hopefully never use, never know. <laughs> The self-defense seminar has become a tradition that Loyola's Karate Club hosts every semester. 2015 has just started, but Loyola's residence life is getting ready for next year. Loyola has 20 residence halls and each one has several RAs to oversee student activities. RAs have weekly staff meetings to talk about programming and events for each building. RAs for next year have already been chosen after a two-week application process. It's been great so far. The application wasn't that bad. It was just like an interview, a single interview with one, um, the director of residence life, and then it's a presentation, so it wasn't terrible. Hiring decisions are made by residence hall supervisors and professional staff. They are in charge of hiring over 150 students. Coming up in our Loyola News Extra, we are looking out for your health and wellness. And take a look at how Chicago celebrates the Chinese New Year. Hey, Luis, did you know that you're Elmo's plan? Your plan? Yeah, Elmo's mommy said that if Elmo is too sick to go to school, the plan is that Elmo stays with Luis and Maria. Oh, yes, we have that plan all in oh, place. Oh, great! <laughs> you never know when your child will be too sick to go to school, so have a plan ready so your child can stay home and get healthy. Luis is the man because he's Elmo's plan. The man because he's Elmo's plan. <laughs> to learn more about preventing flu, visit flu.gov. Be happening. This can't be happening. Of course it's not happening. Armored car. <laughs> Listen, having money isn't about luck. Make your own coffee, save a thousand bucks a year. Feed me. Feed the pig. Greta Patrick is here with today's Loyola News Extra. Thanks, Lane. Today's Loyola News Extra is all about health and fitness, and you can't be healthy without eating healthy. Here are a few facts about healthy eating that won't make you feel like you're starving yourself. One, fad diets don't work. If you wanna be healthy, it's all about cutting out excessive junk food and balancing your diet. Two, stay hydrated. Your body won't feel the need to hold on to water weight if you do. Rule of thumb, if you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. Three, don't treat sweets like they're going to kill you. A cookie every now and again and a piece of cake at a birthday party are completely fine. It's when you completely cut them out of your diet is when you start to feel like you want to eat a whole cake. And finally, eat clean. But what does that mean? That means you should eat fruits, veggies, and meat that are just fruits, veggies, and meat. If you pick up a can or a box of something with a bazillion ingredients listed, that's not clean, put it back on the shelf. Another key to your health is getting plenty of sleep, but a new study shows a growing number of teens and young adults are suffering from sleep deprivation. And researchers say technology is partly to blame. The 20 year long study tracked sleeping habits in young adults and found that by age 18, only one third of them were getting the recommended hours of sleep. Researchers say late night technology use and social media use can actually keep young adults up at night. But the students we talked to say that this is just a natural thing that they do. You're laying in bed and you're kind of tossing and turning and the easiest thing to do is to like grab your phone and go on Facebook or on Instagram, go on Snapchat. Last night I played FIFA and watched Netflix for around six hours before I went to bed. The study calls this change in sleep habits a growing health concern. Negative effects include short-term memory loss, sleep apnea, and depression. 
So we have our nutrition, we have our mental health with the sleep study, but to fully embrace a healthy lifestyle, it takes working up a sweat. And if you want to get one last workout in before going off on spring break, you should check out Hallis Hall's new improvements. As of last Saturday, the staircase up to the second floor is finally finished. Students no longer have to walk outside the gym to go upstairs where the cardio equipment is. And the stairs make it much easier for Hallis staff to monitor everyone. Service associate Matt Wenzel says the new stairs came almost as a shock to everyone. There was a bit of confusion at first because people had gotten used to going outside for it, but now it seems nice. I know us as employees, we like it. It's nice to have everyone all in one spot. Everything's more organized now. The basketball courts are also done, which benefits intramural sports. Wenzel says the basketball courts have been very popular. There's also an indoor track around the basketball court for when all the treadmills inevitably fill up. Going and getting moving at Hallis is a great way to stay active through this cold, snowy weather. There's even a fitness studio at the Water Tower campus for those of you who don't live on Lakeshore. Good to know. Thanks, Greta. The Black Cultural Center hosted its annual Ebony Ball at the Lakeshore campus this past weekend. The Black Cultural Center, the university's African American organization, helps the university celebrate Black History Month. The ball is a formal event complete with food, drinks, a dance floor, and a DJ. Members of the community come together to celebrate and express black culture through music and unity. I like how everyone on campus comes together and it's not a black thing, it's not a white thing, it's, it's everyone and I like that a lot. The highlight of the event comes when the organization presents the best dressed awards at the end of the night. The Black Cultural Center sees Black History Month as a time for progress and gives people a sense of community. Happy New Year! February 19th welcomed a new year in the Chinese lunar calendar and Chicago celebrated in style. An estimated 30,000 people attended Chicago's annual Lunar New Year Parade. Highlights included the many fun and colorful floats featuring the traditional Chinese dragon, and the many marching bands helped to keep spirits high during the bitter cold. The parade is always a crowd favorite, with new visitors coming every year. This is our first time at the parade, and we had a great time, and I think our favorite was the, uh, the dragon, dragon dancers. dancers. Yeah, yeah, they were pretty, they were pretty cool. And the drums were really yeah, cool. Which was reflected, which reflected in the big scale event. This year celebrates the year of the ram, which is tradition says brings promise and prosperity. Now in case you missed it, congratulations to Loyola's improv team, the 45 Kings, for winning the Windy City Regional Improv Tournament. They will move on to nationals in Chicago next month. It's been 25 years since the last Dr. Seuss book was published, but Dr. Seuss Enterprises says a new children's story will be released this summer. The book is titled, What Pet Should I Get? Now, if you love emojis, good news. Apple is releasing over 300 new diverse emojis, including 32 more flags, same-sex families, and a broader range of skin tones. And we want to see your most used emojis. Show us on Twitter at Loyola TV. Dr. Seuss books were always my favorite. Oh, I love him. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's our news today. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week with another edition of Loyola News Chicago. Uh, 